Let's talk about one of the fundamental concepts in Houdini, that is repeating an operation over and over. Let's talk about for loops. So when looking at this image, you might be able to guess how the geometry was created, and that is by applying multiple extrusions to a single cube. Let's talk about how we built this by dropping down a geo node in Houdini's OBJ context, diving in there, and then dropping down a cube or a box as it's called in Houdini. By default, this has one polygonal face per side. We can also set this to be a polygonal mesh so it has multiple polygons per side. Now what I wanna do is I want to use the poly extrude to select a few faces and then extrude them. So let's highlight this one here and let's increase the distance. And you can see this extrudes all the faces simultaneously. However, up in here in the group field, I can type in either the number of a given primitive or a list of given primitives like so, or I can type in the name of a group, which we haven't created yet and doesn't exist, or an expression as I've shown you in a previous tutorial. Let's use this expression workflow to select random faces here. Namely, what I want to do is create an attribute with a random value. So again, let's use the attribute randomize, drop that down, wire it in here, and let's set the attribute to be on primitives. That is the polygonal faces here. And we don't want the color CD to be randomized. And also we want this to be only a float and not a vector with three components. So let's dial this down to only one component and call the attribute maybe this, or let's call it active. And also, I don't want the random distribution to be uniform, but to change between two values, namely 0 and 1. And let's set the probability for this value to be 1 to, say, 20%, 0 0.2. Let's go to the Geo spreadsheet and have a look at this. So under primitives here, we have this active value, which is either 1 for these few primitives here, or 0 for the rest of them. So let's check if this value is 1 down here in the poly extrudes group field here by typing down at to access our active attribute. And if it is exactly equal, that's what these two equal signs mean to one, then we want to extrude this. We can see now we randomly selected a few faces that are being extruded here. One thing I'm seeing here is this, let's just disable the grid. So instead of just extruding those individual faces down into the side, they are joined here. However, I only want those individual primitives to be extruded straight. So let's set the divide into individual elements like so. Also, what I want to do is I want to randomize how far those individual faces are being extruded. And the poly extrude has a tab called local control where I can specify an attribute that scales this distance here. And it's called Z scale. So let's create a random attribute on our primitives as well called Z scale. And in our case, again, let's use an attribute randomize. Why this in maybe before this one, call this Z scale, set its dimensions to one and set its attribute class to be on the primitives. So now immediately you can see we're getting these individual extrusion lengths here. And I can just increase the distance to say one or maybe set it to 0.4 or 0.5. Okay, so these three things here. If I want to repeat this step, what I of course could do is copy these three nodes, pressing Control Z and then Control V to paste them again and then wiring them up down here. And when we change the output from the first extrude to the second extrude, we can see that's doing exactly what we want. Maybe in here in both attribute randomize under the options tab, let's change the global seed. So the seed changes between those individual extrusion steps and gives this a bit more of a random appearance like so. I could do this over and over again until I have a really long node chain and arrive at the result that I envision. However, imagine that I just want to dial in the overall extrusion distance here for all these steps. I would have to select each of those individual extrusion nodes I've created and dial those values in individually. And also copying and pasting for each new extrusion that you want to do is kind of cumbersome, right? So let's get rid of those three nodes and enter the for loop. So if I start typing four here, I can see down here the for loop with a feedback, which drops down this construct of two nodes and this frame around them. Let's just cut this connecting line in here by keeping Y pressed, which turns our cursor into this scissor symbol, and then just clicking with the left mouse button, keeping it clicked, and just cutting through this wire. This is our for loop, which basically does nothing but take an input geometry stream, apply the operators that are within the loop, and then at the end output the result and feed it back into the loop a given number of times, namely how many iterations we dialed it in. So for example, in this case, 10 iterations. Let's reset that to one iteration and wire the first node up here after the box, and the second node after the extrude here and highlight the second extrude. Nothing changed. We are running this whole loop, only one iteration 
iteration. However, let's increase the iterations and we can see we are successively extruding other faces. One thing we are currently not doing, however, is change those seeds so they stay the same for each loop, which is somewhat fine because our primitive count, our poly count is changing and thus the primitive numbers are changing as well. So it's highly unlikely that the same primitive face will be extruded over and over again. However, just to be sure, I want this global seed value to change each iteration. So we need a way to let the seed know in which iteration we are. And to do that, it's a bit cumbersome, but let's go through it. On the repeat begin node here, there's a button called create meta import node which creates this third node. And when you middle mouse on this, you can see this node has a few attributes, namely iteration, I value, num iterations, and value. And in the iteration or I value, we store which iteration we are in. So the I value in this case would range from zero to nine, and the iteration would go from one to 10. Let's just use the iteration here to set the seed directly. In this case, I'll need to use an expression to access this value here. So this, again, if you middle mouse, is a detail attribute. And the way we access this in a given field in Houdini is with an expression called Called detail and this takes a few parameters. First, it takes the path to the node from which it should derive the detail attribute. In this case, this one here. And this is the relative path. So currently, again, think of Houdini as an operating system and this as a tiny program running. We are in the, so to speak, folder of this program. So let's go up one level by dropping down point point and the forward slash. If any of you ever used DOS or Linux, you know this syntax. And now Houdini automatically offers me an autocomplete. So I'll just start typing repeat begin metadata one. That's the node we want to access. Then drop down a comma, and this is Houdini's automatic help here. So it takes the first string, which is the path to the node, the second string, which is the name of the attribute, and then a float value, which is the attributes index. In our case, as this is only a single float value, we can set it to zero. So the attributes name we want to look at is iteration, and its index is zero. And now this is green, so it means it evaluates correctly. We can click on the name here and see the last value that we had. Let's just click on this again and copy this whole expression. Go down here to the attribute randomize one and under options, just paste this and maybe for good measure, add some value to it like so. And now we can easily dial in the number of iterations here and also easily dial in the distance by which we want to extrude or maybe the probability of a face being extruded. So the lower we put this, the lower the probability of a face to get extruded. If you guys like what we're doing and want to support us, you might want to head over to our Patreon and we'd like to thank all of our patrons, especially Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, Patrick Fillion, and Gearbox Studio Quebec. Thanks so much, guys.